Hello, this is Math with Mrs. Cox. We are working on Chapter 12, Lesson 6. It is on page 935 in your math book. Let's begin. A three-dimensional figure has length, width, and height. A net is a two-dimensional pattern of a three-dimensional figure, or a fancy way of saying this is a net. It is a two-dimensional figure, which means it's flat, but if we were to cut it out and bend on each of these black lines, it would make a three-dimensional cube. <clears throat> you can use a net to build a three-dimensional figure. Aha. A cube is a three-dimensional figure with six faces that are congruent squares. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. So example, a face is a flat surface. So if we counted this top part as a face and the bottom part as a face, that's one, two, then we have the three, four, five, six that go around the cube. A rectangular prism is a three-dimensional figure with six rectangular faces. Opposite faces are parallel and congruent. Okay, so opposite faces are parallel and congruent, which means they're the same length and they're parallel. And it has six rectangular faces. Rectangular prism, or pretty much a block. All right. They have this, they want you to copy it, but um, while we're not in the classroom, I'm not gonna have you do this, we'll just work on it. There is additional activities we can do, but we're just gonna work through this just to get you some exposure to three-dimensional projects. All right, turn the page. Okay, we are now talking about, they want this copied onto the graph paper. And if we were to fold this, which shape would it make? Would it make our cube or our rectangular prism? Okay, looking at that, you can probably see with these long block shapes that it would make a rectangular prism. And if you really want to, you're welcome to cut that out and put that together, but I'm okay if you don't. All right, how are the two figures you just built just alike? So they want you to pretend you built this one and you cut that one out and build it. And when they are finished, they're gonna make these two shapes. So we need to decide how these two shapes would be alike after we taped all of these pieces together. So how are, they, how are these two shapes alike? Well, I would have to say they each have six faces. Remember, a face is a side. And they all meet at right angles. How are the two figures built that are different? Well, the first, <coughs> how are the two, how are the two figures you built different? The rectangular prism doesn't have all of the faces absolutely congruent because these ones are longer. So let's look at this one. We just built these two fi with figures. How are they different? These are all congruent, which means they're all the same size, all of the faces. Well, this one, they have some longer faces that go along the body part. So these are longer, so they're not congruent. So the two figures are different because um, we're going to say... The first figure has faces that are all congruent. There we go. All right, talk about it. In the first activity, what two-dimensional figure forms the faces of the figure? How many faces are there? How many are how many are congruent? So about three answers here. So the first activity, we built a square. Okay, there's our first answer. Then we'll do these little dots here. And then it wants to know how many faces are there. So if we were to count this, 
for the top and the bottom would be one and two, and then we go all around the side. One, two, three, four, five, six. There will be six spaces there. And how many are congruent? Well, because it's a square, so all six are congruent. See, that's not so bad. Number two, identify the length, width, and height of a cube you first formed in the activity. One, two, three. Well, because they are all congruent, what we can say is that, well, they are congruent. Remember, congruent means same length. It's just a fancy way of saying same length. All right, what do you notice about the length, width, and height of the cube? And now they're talking about this section right here. What do you notice about this? They are congruent. I made a mistake. Haha, <laughs> this is what happens when I try to get in a hurry. Sorry, folks. They actually want you to know what want to see what you notice about this cube. I apologize. Well, let's look at let's look at it again. The length, well, the length is 5 units. And the width is 5 units. And the height is 5 units. So our original answer of they are all congruent would have worked, but they actually want us to label it with units. Okay, sorry about that, folks. I'm human. All right, number four, identifying the structure. In the second activity, what two-dimensional figures form the face of the figure? How many faces are there and how many are congruent? So now they are talking about us building this. If we were to cut it out and tape it together, and it would build this structure right here. So they want us to see how, what is a two-dimensional dimensional figure. Okay, so that is called a rectangular, rectangle, right? So really easy, we can write, good job. And they want to know how many faces are there. Okay, well let's count. Faces, if we did a top and a bottom, one, two, and all around the edges, one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six faces. Six faces. Now they want to know how many are congruent. So in rectangles, there is, it's a little bit different. Four are congruent. And then two that are the square shape are congruent. Okay, so I'm gonna put four rectangular. Okay, four rectangular shapes are congruent and two square shapes are congruent. And this is what it's talking about. On the very end of your rectangle, you have a square and a square. So these two are congruent, these two square shapes are congruent. And then you have four that wrap around, see? One, two, three, four. These four shapes are congruent. So we're labeling that this rectangle has six faces, four are rectangular congruent, and two are square congruent. Okay, kind of crazy, right? Number five, copy this onto a grid paper, which we're not gonna do, because we're just gonna work on it together as a class. And it wants you to cut along and fold along the, the form. If you were to fold this together, what would you form? Looks pretty similar to what we had here on the first page. And it forms a, yep, you're right, rectangular prism. Good job. What two-dimensional figure forms the face of the figure? So if we were to fold this all together, what, um, what shape is the face or the top part? Yep, you're right. It's going to be a rectangle. How many faces are there? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There you go. Describe the congruent faces. 
there are three pairs of congruent rectangles. So if we were to put this together, this is what it would look like. So we have the front and the back and the top and the bottom. And there are three pairs of congruent rectangles. Now that's what the answer says in the book. I know some of you are confused about that. But they also call, remember when we went back to our um, polygon sheet, remember all squares, squares can be rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So even though on the very end of this, this is a square, they actually do call them a rectangle. So that's why that's confusing. I wish that on this, it would have said two pairs of rectangles and then one pair of squares is what I wish it would have said. And if you do write that, I will accept that answer because that works better with my mind and organizing things. But I do want you to realize that um, all squares can fit into rectangles on geometry. Kind of crazy, I know. So this is what the answer book has, but I'm okay if you put this answer too because if your brain looks like that with me. All right, number seven, friends. Let's work on that one. If we were to put all this together, what shape would that make? Well, I'm looking at all of these and they look like they're all squares. So I think that will form a fun little box called a cube. It would look like that when it's all put together. Then it's asking what two-dimensional figure is the face. So the very front of this, what shape is that? Yep, you're right. It's a square. Now it wants us to count how many faces there are. It's kind of nice when it's laid out like this. It's a little bit easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you see, if we put it together in a block or cube, it would still be like the front and the back would be two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around it. So there are six faces. How many congruent? Well, that's the nice thing about it being a cube is that they are all congruent. So all six faces are congruent. Fabulous. Now it wants us to identify the length, the width, and the height of the figure we just formed. Now this is where it's kind of handy where it's been on graph paper. So let's count the squares, one, two, three, four. So if we put all this together into a cube, it's gonna be four units um, length, and then four units is the width, and then four units as the height. Easy peasy. All right, let's turn to page 938. The rectangular prism-shaped building shown at the right used for the 200, 2008 Olympics in Beijing, China. What two-dimensional figures form the side of the building? So they have, here is the building, and it looks like it's a, it's a um, cube that's really little. Very good. Let's see what it's asking. I see, on uh, the face of this, I see a square, but on the side, I see a rectangle. So I'm going to put squares and rectangles. Write that a little bit neater so you can read that. There you go. Including the floor, how many faces are there? So if I count the top, one, and remember there's a bottom, two, and you go around the edge, three, four, the back would be five, and this side would be six. Six faces. Very good. Okay, now, Draw two different nets that would form a cube with height of four units. So number one, it says net. It's asking us to draw something like this that would form a cube. So I'm going, this is kind of like if you've ever played Tetris, this will make a few shapes that you're familiar with in Tetris. So I would draw about two units right here.
Does this look familiar if any of you have played Tetris? It's an old Nintendo game back in my day. It's actually pretty fun. Okay, and here's another shape that if you were to cut it out, it would make a cube. Ah, Ta-da! Number 12. Farmers have learned how to grow watermelons through this shape shown to the right. And the reason how they do that is they actually put it in like a, it's like an Easter egg mold. Like you remember like the plastic Easter eggs, it's kind of like a little two piece plastic mold, but it's shaped like a square and they put the pumpkin or the watermelon in that. And as the pumpkin grows or the watermelon grows, it fills the shape and that's how they can get square watermelons. Pretty crazy, right? Um, what three-dimensional figure is shown? And I just gave you the answer several times, but we're going to call it this because a square would just be this face part, and the cube is three-dimensional. All right, number 13, and then we are done with this guided practice. How are nets used to build three-dimensional figures? Well, a net is a two-dimensional pattern. You can put 2D pattern. It's a 2D pattern of a 3D figure. You can cut, fold, and tape to form a pattern. Whoops, I meant to say figure. All right, there you go, friends. All right, next what you need to do is um, watch the video for the homework, and then after the homework, you do have two IXL topics you need to work on. The IXL topics you need to work on after this homework are D2 and D double D3. All right, friends, have a great day. Thank you so much.